and welcome to Religion Link TV, where my spiritual here stay. breaks up the history of David. The Greek Septuagint titled is Biblio Basileon, Books of the Kingdoms, referring to their later kingdoms of Israel and Judah. First Samuel is also called Basileon Alpha, First Kingdoms. Second Samuel and First Second Samuel and First and Second Kings are, are called Second, Third, and Fourth Kingdoms. Okay. The Latin Vulgate, originally called the Books of Samuel in Kings Libri Regium, Books of the Kings, later the Latin Bible combined the Hebrew and Greek titles for the first of these books called it Libri, Libri, Liber. 1 Samuel is the first book of Samuel or simply 1 Samuel. Are you guys getting this? Okay, so right into 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1. But first get your teacups and your Bibles, right? And let's get into this read. Alright, so before we go on, we've been reading this book aloud 
30 days straight, y'all. If you want to... If you want to catch up with us, sorry about that. And if you want to go back to where we started on March 2nd, which is Deuteronomy chapter uh, 5, and work your way through Samuel chapter 3, you'll be caught up First Samuel chapter 3. Go to the beginning, which is Genesis chapter 1 and 1, and then you can go ahead and move forward and be on one accord with us as we journey through the Word of God. Alright, so let's get busy. Now, there was a certain man of Ramat the Azab Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, and the son of Jeroboam, the son of Elihu, the son of Toha, the son of Zuth, and Ephrite. I told you my story related to Hannah in the last video, uh, The Morning Read 29. Go ahead and check that video out, and you'll understand why I didn't give you a backdrop here, because I gave it to you yesterday morning. Alright, go there to see how I'm related to Hannah and how you can start to see yourself in your in this Bible and consider yourself a blessing as well. Right? There's nothing new under the sun. Have you had a son that you dedicated to the Most High God? Alright. And Hannah went through some other things as well that most of you women probably can relate to. Verse 2. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peniah, Penina, Penina, Penina. And Penina had children, and Hannah had no children. Three. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And two sons of Eli, Hopni, and Penihas, the priest of the Lord, were there. Four. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, to all her sons and her daughters, portion. Five. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord has shut up her womb. Alright, so we go on to verse five. Verse six, excuse me. And her adversary also provoked her sore, meaning severely. For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. 7. And as he did so year by year, when she, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. So every year they went to the house of the Lord, which was not every Sunday on church. Uh, in church. It was every year up to the house of the Lord, right? Uh, Penina, with me, Hannah there, the second wife, Hannah was the first wife, could not have no kids, shut up, barren, could not give, you know, conceive. Penina has children, and she's taunting and picking on Hannah because Hannah can't bear children. At the church, people, I told you these are some of the most wickedest people there, y'all. So let's keep it going. Um, and it says that she did not eat. 8. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better than thee, than ten sons? Her husband, like, ain't I better than ten sons? Haven't I been good to you? 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore greatly. 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give thy, give unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give unto him the Lord all the days of his lives, and there shall no razor come upon his head. All right, here's another vow. This may still be the tribe of the Benjamins here, because the Nazarites, who are the Benjamins today, Benjaminites, they are the Jamaicans of the world, and a part of their sect, the Rastafari's, 
they refused to cut their hair from birth. So it goes on to say, 12, And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. 13, now that means it was like trying to read it and see what it says, right? Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. Have you ever prayed so hard, somebody thought you were drunk? Have, I mean, people, there's nothing new under the sun. This stuff is real. There's people out here trying to get stuff from God. There's people out here that believe that they can pray and God still hear what they're saying. So verse 14, And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away the wine from thee. 15, And Hannah answered, said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. So there was strong drink and wine in these days. But I have poured out my soul before the Lord. 16. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken hitherto. 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. What have you asked of God? Go in peace. Sin no more. And God will grant your desires of your heart once you des delight yourself in him. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, 18, and she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. People, you got to get your countenance to where it's no more sad, okay? You got to get your countenance to where it's no more sad. So, 19, and they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. He knew her. That meant he had sex with her. He went into her. That meant he had sex with her. If you hear those two frame, those two um, terms, that mean a man went into a woman. Now, when you hear two men and they say they he knew he wanted to know him or he knew him question it only matthew 19 and 22 talks about the union all right so it goes on to say 20 wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name samuel saying because i have asked him of the lord that means his name is god he's of god right Emmanuel God with us. This is Samuel. Kind of similar, but we read with the name Samuel. I used to think Samuel was an ugly name growing up, y'all. But I realized the name of God. His name is God. Heard of God and asked of God, right? So, 21. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vows. But Hannah went up not. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. She's like, no, once I go back up there, I'm going to make sure this baby is weaned, I done raised him good, and ready to turn him over to the Lord. That's called being a good steward over your children, because God gave you those children, whether you know it or not right <laughs> and God may have not given you kids whether you know it or not so enjoy your life where you are let God meet you right where you are people so look at Hannah Hannah's a prime example she wanted kids the other wife had kids all she did was stand on her faith and God gave a son to this woman because what she said and what she vowed was to offer the son to God what are you doing with, when you get your kids, your children? 
playing them against the other parents so they can't see them in the court divorce uh, or, 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 or a, a separation agreement. Uh, you, 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 you're manipulating the kids for money, you know, using the kids to exploit the other parent. What are you doing when God gives you these children after you cry out to a state of drunkenness? All right, so it also goes on to say, um, 24, he's not coming back. I'm going to give this man of the Lord, right? 23, and Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, do what seemeth there good. I'm all in agreement, baby. I love you. <laughs> You've been my woman. Wiggle without a child. I was trying to tell you, baby. Ain't no better than ten sons. Now you got this one son. You go ahead and do what you got to do. I'm going to still go to the temple and praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Okay? For all of us now. People take a lesson from this. So Elkanah, her husband, in verse 23, said unto her, Do what seemeth they good. Tarry till thou have weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. Now we don't know how long that took. Some of our babies get off bottles at uh, the breast of the bottle, eight, nine months. Some get off a year, 16 months. They say our Latino brothers and sisters then now this is Louis, Louis, uh, uh, you know that Latino comedian. He said they be 13 pushing them in the stroller with a wedding dress on and some high heel shoes. And I say sucking on a bottle. <laughs> God bless y'all though. This is no disrespect to any race. I love, they're a part of the tribe of Israel, whether you know it or not. All right. They'll keep us divided as well. So it goes on to say 24. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, and with three bullocks and one um, ephah, ephah of flour and a bottle of wine, and broke him unto the Lord, unto the house, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. See, until we get back to Shiloh, until we get back to Shiloh, you all, right? So it goes on to say, excuse me, that was a piece of gum. So it goes on to say, yeah, I know I'm maybe a little close or whatever, but I'm going to try this setup right here. Um, do the best I can with it, okay? At least they say you have to, like, see the eyes or whatever, but I'm here. I mean, you got a whole body today. So it goes on to say, 25. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. 26. And he said, and she said, O oh my Lord, as thou so liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. 27. For this child I pray, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Have God given you his peti your petition, which you asked of him? I do apologize. I saw my eyes was up above that. Let me kind of scoop big just a tad bit there we go in the last verse of chapter one which we're only 18 minutes in guys that's amazing i believe we can get done before an hour and this isn't to say i don't want to interact live but i think to get the word to get the understanding to get the uh the 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 meaning the revelation of it, you know, it may be something you've been asking God and seeking God. And if you sit under the word, eventually you'll get your answer. I encourage you, okay? So then it goes on to say, being led into Hannah Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 2, by the Holy Spirit, we will go and read Second First Samuel. in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. You have to start rejoicing over your enemies. Don't be afraid to do it. This woman taunted Hannah who could not bear a child. There's some women in this world being taunted, being taunted and taunted. 
And um, you got to rejoice in that situation. Verse 2, there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. 3. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. 4. The bowels of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumble are girded with strength. 5. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren hath, hath born seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The one who was barren waxed seven, and the one who had children is waxed feeble. God is so good, y'all. Verse 6, And the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. 7, The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. 8, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lieth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the, of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Nine, and he will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by the strength shall no man prevail. Ten, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall the hunt shall he thunder upon them and the lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his kings and exalt the horn of his anointed raise up the horn of those that are anointed those that are called according to his name those 11 and elkanah went to ramna to the house and the child did minister unto the lord before eli the priest 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Baalial. They knew not the Lord. It's a lot of B words in this world that are gods but not of the Lord, okay? 13. And the priest's customs with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Fourteen. And he struck it into a pan and or kettle and or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up out the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all of the Israelites that came together. Israelites, not Israelis, y'all. Israelites, not Israelis, y'all. Israelites, not Israelis, y'all. So it goes on to say, 15, also before they burnt that fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden, that means boiled flesh of thee, but raw. 16, and if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, First, and then take as much as they soul it desire, then would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. 17, and we are almost, we have to go to verse 36. And we're 24 minutes in, y'all. We're doing pretty good. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel, verse 18, ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with the linen ephod. 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer yearly sacrifices. Every Sunday sacrifice, yearly sacrifice. Every Sunday sacrifice, yearly sacrifice, right? And Eli 20, 
blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan granted, which is lent, amen, to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. 22. So, okay, that was saying she had seven children and she waxed feeble. Talking about Peninia. Hannah has Samuel, three more sons, and it just says two daughters. A total of six, I believe. The, uh, 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all of Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Like some of the people and pastors are doing in the church today. Laying with the women at the gate. Right? 22. 23. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. 24. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to tra transgress. 25. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice. Excuse me, not unto the voice ooh, of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. See, Christ did this as well, if you read his account. 27. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? 28. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all thine offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? 29. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which ye I have commanded, in my habitation honor and honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of israel my people 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that thy house and thy house of thy father shall walk before me ever but now the lord saith be it far from me for them that honoreth me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. God is only lightly <laughs> esteeming some people in this world today. You have to begin to love the Most High God more than you love any possession, even your children that you have. He gave you those children. He gave you the substance that you had. That's in a, that in a, in and of itself is enough to love him because he said he gave you power to get well so you got out there and bust your butt to get what you want but it was god who gave you that power that strategic mind that way of an escape 28 minutes in y'all we doing good right so it goes on to continue to say 31 behold the days come that i will cut off thine arm and thy arm of thy father's house all there shall not be an old man in thine house. 32. And thou shalt see an enemy in mine habitation. And all, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. 33. And the man of thine whom I shall not cut off from mine altar. Shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. 34. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon two thy sons, upon thy two sons of Hope, Niah, and Penias. And one day there shall, they shall die, both of them. We have to just read on and see how, right, guys? Let me give you some more light behind here. There we go. Make it bright, right? 
anyway, and 36, 35 goes on to say, And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. Okay, I just turned that a little bit. Let me get that back for you here, people. 36, the go. last verse of chapter 2. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch. That means bow down to, to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread. And shall say, put me, I pray thee, into one of thine priest's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. So guys, we're going to go ahead and transition being led by the Holy Spirit right into chapter 3. And we're only 30 minutes in, guys. This is good. This is really good. Any questions you have, any comments, put them down in the premiere when we're going down. Put them in the live chat right now, okay? And, and I'll answer them. We can communicate now. It's not like I'm reading and every time somebody comes in, I'm like, good morning, good morning, good morning. You see, I lose my train of spot uh, where I'm at anyway, right? Without the distractions, which isn't distractions, but this is the morning read. This is like Sunday school for us, right? So getting right into this is Religion Wing TV and my spiritual ears stay. Getting right into chapter three. And the child Samuel ministers unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Let's get back to where the word of God was precious in those days. Isn't it precious here? Can't you feel the passion? Can't you feel the sincerity? Can't you feel the Holy Spirit? The genuine, the pureness of heart? It goes on to say, verse 2, And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim. That pretty much says on his way to death, right? That he could not see... Uh, well, not death, but he could not see going blind. Let me not misspeak. And we only have 21 verses to go. 3 says, And ere the lamp of God went out of the temple of the Lord, when the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. So Samuel passes away. Oh, no, he might have just laid down to sleep. Ne never cast death on anyone. I, I, I apologize for misspeaking here. Although they're already passed on, I still don't want to speak death over anybody, right? So four, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. Five, and he ran unto Eli and said, Here I am, for the Lord calleth me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Have you ever heard anybody call you? They tell you it's the devil in the world. They was like, you better not answer that call. People, sometimes you got to just know what voice you're listening to, okay? He says, my sheep shall know my voice. So then it goes on to say, sometimes we get the voice of the Lord and the voice of the enemy and the devil and the people of the world confused and we have to stop doing it. So it goes on to say, um, six. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli. He thinking Eli calling him. Like so many of y'all thinking people are calling you. But it's God truly trying to call you out from amongst them. But you keep hearing the voice and being led that way. Instead of being led by the word of God. Right? Here I am. For thou did call me. And he answered. I call not my son. Lie down again. God is calling, he's answering to Eli. God is calling, he's answering to Eli. God is calling, he's answering to Eli. My daughter does that. Mind you call me? No, that's God. Go lay down, girl. I ain't call you. You better stop listening to that voice and start hearing the voice of the Most High God. I ain't saying she ain't so sent, you know sinful she's she's a christian believing woman and she's not even a christian believing she's crossed over to where we all are getting back to this bible just trusting and believing in god but we all don't be at the same 
five even though we're in the same house and in the same fold and learning and teaching and talking from the same bible 35 minutes in guys we got to get through this okay so now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. So God is calling people. All he, although his mom offered him to the Lord, he ministered to the Lord. Sometimes you yet not know the Lord. And he's calling. And you answering to other people or thinking other people are calling you. Many are called, few are, few are chosen. Learn to know the voice of God. Learn to get to know God. Samuel eventually does, and we'll keep reading and see how. But again, people, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. How do you know God? By his word. If you know God, if you know faith through the word of God, you know God, because God is faith, right? So, it goes on to say, 8, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. You can perceive who's calling who. You can perceive. You can begin to perceive. That is in the spirit. Your eyes perceive. And your hearing understands. It's a perception as well. In the spirit. You perceive things. Oh, come on somebody. Nine. Thank God there's an Eli around that can perceive what God is saying and what God is who God is talking to and who it's intended for. His word is intended for, right? So nine. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord. Somebody just say, Speak, Lord. <laughs> For that servant to hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 10. And the Lord came and stood and called at, as at other times Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak. For thy servant hear it, Lord. 11. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that hear it, it shall tingle. You hear, your, your ears ever, t ever tingle? I told you when I was 17, I shot a shotgun for the first time, didn't have earplugs in, fell on my back, and my ears been ringing ever since. But God used it to now say that my spiritual ear... I developed it into a hearing. I start, I could perceive more with this ear than this ear that's never been damaged. But at the same time, it's, it's my inner hearing now. Take what the enemy or yourself used to hurt you and turn it around and God will make it for your good. All right. So he's going to do something to make the ears tingle. We're at 38 minutes, y'all. I think we could get done in 12 minutes. If not, it will not go over an hour. And I tend to appreciate this read because I'm enjoying it, people. I enjoy you, too. Premiere, I get to talk with you and I get to experience you as well as hear the word of God. And we get communicate about it, right? All right. Time is of the essence, but... One day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day when you're with, you, with the Lord. That's why we can get through three of these chapters. You don't know how much time, how many years then expanded from Genesis to the book of Samuel. Look at that, people. You don't feel it in your spirit. You don't go there. Let's so go there. Get in your feelings this way. You want to get in your feelings? Get in your feelings this way, people. Let me tell you. This is the way to get in your feelings and let yourself go there. Calgon, take me away, please. <laughs> right? So 12 goes on to say, In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. God is not going to leave you out there hanging, and dry, and drown, and sink. He... No, 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 no. Jeremiah 29, 11, I believe. 13, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. So Eli the priest allowed his sons, Peneus, 
And the other one, I can't quite get his name. Hold on. Penis. And... Anyway, watch it on replay. Two sons of Eli's. Who, if Eli is the priest of God, allowed them to get away with something vile and wicked. So he cursed God, cursed their house, and said he's going to carry it out unto that day. Look for the descendants of Eli and see if their house is not cursed unto this day. So it goes on to say, 14, And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the, the iniquity, the continuous sin, disrespect and disobedience against God of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. 15. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Now this is somebody he trained under pretty much. He trained under him. We're in verse 15, and we have to go to 21. We're at 41 minutes, guys. I think I can get this done in four minutes. Say my goodbyes way before an hour and have this thing uploaded. Hopefully, 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 I ain't giving no time. It will be uploaded in a little, in a little while. It's 1130 East Coast time. I want to say by 12, but I know the minute we get off of here and I begin to upload it and edit a little bit, it's going to be crazy. So let's just keep the faith in. It'll go through hopefully by 12 p.m. East Coast time, okay? All right. 16 then. But I'm a realist with my with my equipment. I know my equipment. So that's why it is kind of harder to do the pre-recorded because I have to pre-record transfer it to the computer, edit it, then upload it, then premiere it, or just upload it. I'd rather premiere it like a live than not at all, because I do like the interaction with the people who show up for the morning reads. God bless you, and I appreciate you. But again, if I just go live, and then I, it could go an hour, two hours, because I love to talk. I'll answer everybody's question pretty much. And So 42 minutes in. Thank God. Then Eli, verse 16, called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here I am. <laughs> now that's an obedient man. When this man, when his mom said, you're going to serve the Lord, here I am. <laughs> when you hear that call, speak, Lord. <laughs> Thy servant, hear it. Here I am. <laughs> uh hey, YouTube. It happened, guys. So here I am using the webcam. I was recording on... This phone here, and it ran out of storage 42 minutes in. So I'll be able to finish the last three or four verses here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go, okay? So verse 17, and he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? It goes on to say, I pray thee, hide it not from me. God, do so to thee, and more also. If thou hide anything from me, all of the things that he said unto thee. 18 and Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him and he said is it the Lord let him do what seemeth him good 19 and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and he did let none of his words fall to the ground see you have a choice not to let the word of God fall to the ground I'm going to try to get Guys, this thing is so short, I have to sit up on it like this, if not, um, but I'll keep my videos short and, you know, try to do the camera more because I can get more storage space on it. And I, I mean, I can move back and have more, you know, bigger scenery than this webcam. I have to be right up on it. So verse 20, uh, 19, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and he did let none of his words fall to the ground. 20, and all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be the prophet of the Lord. Are you established to be the prophet of the Lord? Now, you know, you got some people out here like the R. Kelly situation who their mothers are pimping out their children allegedly. Uh, and you know, 
uh, misusing kids throughout the world, pedophile, molesting. Are you vowing? And I know kids grow up and grow off and go to their own way. People were, were more dedicated to the word of God here. We got one verse to God. One verse to go, guys. Um, People were more dedicated to the word of God here, right? So it's like, encourage. It says, train a child in the way it should grow. If the child depart, when it gets old, it'll return back to it. So people, I encourage you, man. Samuel grew. It says here, 19, and the Lord was with him and did not and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Fail. 20, and all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Are you establishing your children to be a prophet of the Lord? And the last verse of this morning, read y'all, says... And the Lord, verse 21, appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Everything's done by the word of the Lord. Guys, this has been the morning read. We have read aloud 30 days straight. We have read Samuel, 1 Samuel, verse 1, 2, chapter 1, 2, and 3. Um, please, 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 please find yourself available to join us. I do go live or premiere between 9 and 6 a.m. Today was a late day, y'all. Um, we all need our me time. I'm going to go ahead and let this song rock out. This is Religion Link TV, my spiritual year. Stay. <laughs> Guys, it's been real. We got through it. Hannah could not have children, but she kept her faith in the Lord. She went before the temple. She prayed so hard, Eli, the priest who let his two sons do evil things in front of the Lord, thought she was drunk. But then he blessed her. He said, child, go. May the Lord give you what you ask. She went. Her husband went into her and bare the son called him Samuel which is the name of God he is of God um asked of God and there's one more I don't have it but it's in the replay people hear me out we stayed under an hour I do believe hopefully with the editing and stuff I'm gonna throw it all on the movie maker but we stayed under an hour because we were focused because we told the story of Hannah who couldn't have kids and her her uh, matey as we say in the Jamaican culture the second wife of her husband Elkanah taunted her caused her to be vexed sore and just depressed and sad what woman don't want to have children by her husband this woman taunted her even at the church and we saw how Hannah prevailed. We saw how she dedicated her son to the Most High God. We saw this man grow up before the Lord. And his words, God's words, never fell from before him. Let me just go ahead and see where this music is. And keep talking to you like this so I can keep track over there. Because when the music ends, so does the morning read. But the word of God lasts forever, y'all. The grass may wither and the flowers may fade, but the word of God stands forever. This is Religion Week TV and my spiritual ears stay. Psalms 1 and 19, 105. Shalom and have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and I think that's it. So, what's going to happen now is I'm going to go ahead and put the morning read together, guys. This is your girl, they're doing TV. And I am going to do the best that I can, okay? Yes. All right, I'll see you in a little while.
this has been a long, long journey. Thank you for watching Religion Wing TV because my spiritual ears stay.